Welcome to The Weird Shack, the podcast that explores the weird and spooky. I'm Ollie Tobbles with my co-host Rieski. Howdy. Siege. Hey, how's it going? And Jordan with Stick. Hello. And today we're talking about aliens. Ooh. In episodes one, we didn't really talk about ourselves and our beliefs, so here they are. Me, personally, I believe in ghosts, but I haven't really seen anything myself. Uh, I quite like the Wiccan pagan religion and how it's like connected to being a spiritualist using like gemstones and spellcraft to like better their lives and mm-hmm. my own and how I perceive life. But like, in I often go to like exploring abandoned buildings and like what is apparently haunted. So that that's me. Yeah, I can go next. Um, I believe in ghosts, because apparently I've seen one, uh, <laughs> based on my story from last time, and if my dad isn't lying. Um, but I do find the interest, like the idea of ghosts, interesting. But I also um, do believe in there being, you know, other life in the universe. I feel like there is, there's so much of it that it kind of feels like it's impossible that there's not something out there yeah um as far as like other stuff goes um like with cryptids and things like that i think it depends on like the individual situation uh the different circumstances around it but in the most part i'm like i'm i'm okay to like give everything a chance you know i don't consider myself that skeptical but you know I'll give it a go. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, who's uh, next? I'll jump in here. So, yeah, I believe in the paranormal, so, you know, the ghosts and all that spooky sort of stuff. Mainly because of past experiences and... Yeah. um, Then when it comes to aliens, the same as Jordan there, like... As he said, with so much out there, it's it's you know not out out of the possibilities of there not being anything out there, sort of thing. But whether we've had encounters on Earth, that's like a whole new another sort of like story, sort of thing. Like, do I believe in most of them? Mm, not really. But in a broader sense of like aliens existing in general, yeah. Um, apart from that. I'd do like a good old conspiracy theory. They are mm. quite interesting to just like learn and read about and just yeah, yeah. Especially with like how some of them view the world and how like certain things happen in it and stuff. It's quite interesting. But yeah, it's about me. Hmm. I guess I'll go I'll say my part now. Um, I'm the pure skeptic in this group. I don't believe in ghosts at all. Um regardless of any past experiences i think there's a scientific explanation for it all uh but not to say it doesn't scare the uh hell out of me because anything different (laughs) yeah it terrifies me um in regards to aliens i absolutely believe 100 percent that there is life out there somewhere whether intelligent microbes germs anything like that regardless i do think there is something out there with the amount of stars just in our Milky Way alone, and the amount of universes out there, galaxies, etc. Yeah, I I can't imagine there not being anything else. I don't think there has to be. Yeah, that we're nothing special. We are. I purely think we're just a pure coincidence. Um, a very lucky coincidence that we even exist at all, really. Um. In terms of cryptids and stuff like that, I mean, I do believe there was maybe a Bigfoot or something like that. I mean, there was primates from a long time ago that were just as big as the Bigfoot, I suppose. Um, I mean, you even had giant sloths back in the uh, different older eras and whatnot. Um, But yeah, I do believe in cryptids. I just don't think they're probably alive anymore or something like that, so... But yeah, it's pretty much me summed up. Lovely. 
Okay. Um, uh, we haven't actually all got stories to tell today, have we? I think it's just me. No, yeah. yeah. But I'm going to talk about um, probably one of the more uh, famous um, alien sightings, and that is the Flatwoods Monster. So, this is the uh, headline for the news article. Brexton County residents faint, become ill, after run-in with weird 10-foot monster. That's the headline for this encounter that happened in 1952 in the village of Flatwoods, West Virginia. The May brothers, Ed 13 and Freddie 12, were playing with their 10-year-old friend, Tommy, when they saw a pulsing red light streak across the sky and crash into a nearby farm. The boys ran to get the May boy's mother and started running to the crash site. They were joined by a few other boys and a dog as they travelled up the hill. The group also included a 17-year-old member of the National Guard called Gene Lemon, who led the group. As Gene was leading the group, he appeared he saw what appeared to be a pair of bright eyes in a tree. At first, he thought it was an opossum or a raccoon. But when he shone his flashlight on it, he saw a 10-foot monster with a blood-red face and a green body that seemed to glow. Mr. May said uh, that Lemon let out a terrified scream and fell over backwards. And then she said that the monster started towards them in sort of a bounding motion. Um, sort of like bobbing up and down as it approached. Uh, all of the party agreed that there was an overpowering smell that burned their nostrils and made them feel sick. Several of the party fainted and vomited for several hours after returning to town. Um, between 30 minutes to an hour after, Lemon and several men armed with shotguns returned to the site where they said there was a sickening smell still and slight heat waves in the air. One of the men in the group said, Those people were the most scared I've ever seen. People don't make up that kind of story that quickly. Both Mrs. May and Lemon described the thing as having the shape of a man, blood red face, bright green body, protruding eyes and a hand extend with, extended forward. Also, it appeared to give off an eerie light. Behind its head was a large black ace of spades shape and it wore what looked like a pleated metallic dress, sort of like a skirt. Um, at the time of the sighting, America was in a state of nationwide anxiety as uh, three years earlier, the Soviet Union had successfully tested an atom bomb, which started the Cold War. The country had a constant fear of uh, the Red Menace, as it was known. Um, people built shelters in their backyards and theatres, showed films depicting nuclear devastation and mutant creatures. Um, five months before the incident, Life magazine, which is quite like a big magazine in America, they dropped uh, the headline, have we visitors from space? Um, within was stories of supposed um, credible accounts of sightings from Air Force pilots. And the idea of visitors from the other worlds, from other worlds, was uh, big in the minds of America. So it makes sense that this sighting could have just been paranoid locals seeing a comet in the sky and getting a bit excited when they saw an angry barn owl up a tree. <laughs> or it could have been a publicity stunt devised by a few locals, as today Flatwoods makes decent money uh, selling t-shirts and other memorabilia. Or, you know, it could have actually been an alien. <laughs> so yeah, that's sort of the story of the Flatwoods monster. I've got um, a picture, which uh, I believe was done by a sketch artist at the time, um, based on the descriptions that uh, Jean Lemon and Mrs. May, who's the mother of the boys, um, said about. Here you go, I'll post it okay, so you sweet. guys can see it. Um, so yeah, it's quite an interesting story, um, and it's 
it's an interesting one because of like the backstory behind it, the fact that at the time America was in a very interesting like state because of what was going on with uh, the Cold War. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of fear and anxiety in the people, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I know. What do you guys think of it? <laughs> That's weird. Have you heard of it before? I, I've not heard of it before. I've heard mm. of it. Mm, seen the sketch. Makes me chuckle a bit. <laughs> yeah, the sketch is interesting. What do you think, Reese? Yeah, I can't say I've ever heard of it before. Like, I've all the more like well-known ones. Yeah. Out of them, it's just I've never heard of this one. Yeah, it's quite interesting. It's one of those ones which has a weird cult following. It's like, apparently it's quite big in Japan. Um, <laughs> there's there's a game um, called Tamodachi Life. It's like a, a DS game, and one of the decorations you can get for your room in that is like a cryptid decoration. And one of the cryptids featured is this <laughs> is uh, the Flatwoods Monster. Um, uh, they're also in uh, Fallout 76. Yeah, I saw that then when I was researching it. Yeah, in Fallout 76 they appear as an enemy. Um, there, because it's set in West Virginia, Fallout 76, yeah. so it has a lot of those uh, cryptids associated with the area, like Mothman. Um, but yeah, in that I think it's because uh, there's like there's an established alien race in the Fallout universe, it's like the Zetans. And uh, it's supposed to be like one of those in like a special suit. Yeah. But yeah, I was I was thought it's quite an interesting one. I thought it's kind of like creepy, the like circumstance and how it happened. Yeah. And also the fact that it was like quite a large group that saw it. And you know, it doesn't really make a lot of sense that unless it was literally a publicity stunt and they'd all planned it beforehand. Like otherwise, I don't know how that would have happened and all of them come away from it being like oh yeah that <laughs> this happened this is what it looked like you know so you said like it was glowing mm. so was it like it's it's like torso it's clothes it was wearing apparently just like it's whole it's whole like was glowing. it's like aura yeah it had like a glowing aura to but it. it had a red face and the rest of it was green green yeah green green yeah so it has a bright, a bright red face the rest of it's green. Like that, the uh, initial sketch there doesn't really show it, but there are some other pictures um, that people have done. They said they saw like red eyes in the trees and stuff. How can you like, unless it was like they, they shined and the eyes was red? Yeah, well, he saw. I I don't know what time in the day this yeah. was. I guess it wasn't at night. Well, he it like, said he said you said he aimed a flashlight in the direction. Yeah, so I'm assuming it was like getting dark. Yeah. And maybe, like, you know, when it's, like, at that sort of stage, maybe he just, like, saw the glint of, like, an animal's eyes in the yeah. trees. Well, that's what he thought. And then uh, saw this creature. Um, there's been, like, quite a few explanations of it. People have said that... I mentioned the bar now. Um, <laughs> that's the most popular theory behind it, is that it's, it was actually a barn owl up a tree. Yeah. And the rest of it is just the tree, um, and the barn of uh, female barn owls are very protective of their young, so it could have been just a nest was there, and it was just protecting its young, so it was like being quite aggressive towards them. Um, but also the other part is the smell. Yeah. Um, people have like theorized that there was like a gas leak or something in the area, or like some sort of like underground. Um, like moving of like releasing gases because you know you can get like pockets of gases like stuck underground and stuff like that caused by different you know natural uh, phenomena and whatever but yeah it was it, I don't know it's quite an interesting one I kind of like the idea of it <laughs> so why were they all together like why were they traveling so basically like these kids see this red light Right, like, yeah. Crash, yep. And they're just like, "Oh, let's go, let's go see it." So they go and get their parents, and well, just their mum, and she lead like goes up with them. And on the way, they sort of like, I guess, other kids were like, "Oh, what are they doing?" And just sort of followed them. Um, and one of them happened to be this um, 
member of the National Guard. And he's, he was quite like a young member, Gene Lemon, he was only 17 years old. And he was sort of going up with them, I guess, to keep an eye on them, make sure they were alright. Um, but yeah, they went up there and then they had this encounter. And it's interesting that like they all came back and were experiencing like sickness and fainting. But yeah, I mean, pe people say that, you know, it was, it was just there was a comet in the sky, which like could explain the light. But then, like, it's a lot of natural things happening in a certain, like, situation. Yeah, at the same time. Like, it, yeah, like, it, it's very unlikely that, oh, you'd see a meteor. You'd go up into the woods and there happens to be a gas leak that makes you see this weird thing. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. like, it, it's, it's odd that there's all these connecting events and they just have, like, if you want to explain it as, like, something else then you have to make the argument that oh <laughs> all of this stuff just happened to happen at the same time <laughs> i uh, i don't suppose there was any in the news story does it say if there's any debris or anything collected or recovered or anything like no. that no later um a search when they went up and tried to find anything um the initial group went up and searched they said that there was a smell still. Yeah. Um, but then after them, the police went and checked, and they the police didn't find anything. There was no smell. There was no debris or anything. No one found any debris. Mm. So was there was any really... impact site at all? Did Not they find that? Find no. So mm. because they, they basically just went to the area and encountered this creature. creature. Yeah. So they may not that's... have come across the impact. So, like, yeah, yeah. But the weird thing but, was, like, they said they felt ill. Like, it was like, was it due to seeing the monster? Well, I'm guessing it was related to the G smell, the gas, yeah. um, or the gas, or whatever it was. Um, I guess it's being um, released by the creature, uh, or you know, it could just be some sort of gas leak. But you know. But what would have what, what would have made the like owl like look red though? I don't know. Maybe they were hallucinating because of the yeah, gas. Yeah. But I don't know. It's just a lot of you know. You've got to make a lot of uh, connections there for those things to have happened at that time. I don't know. It's just, it's a hard one to explain on like a, even on a skeptical point of view. I don't know what you think, Chris. Being being a skeptic, what do you think? Mm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to picture how this event went in my head. It's just really hard to picture it, though. I just imagine a group of lads or people Night. seeing seeing something flying down from the sky. They go and get the mother, etc. Go and get a bit of a posse, round them up. All go there, and they just, I don't know. They all see a baby owl or something staring at them, or <laughs> something with a red face. <laughs> And from the sketch, <laughs> from the uh, artist sketch of it, what was it, f floating with a skirt or something? Uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. hard to tell. Um, that's how that's how they described it. Yeah, I don't. I just kind of feel like it was probably just a very elaborate hoax, personally, just to sell some shirts. <laughs> it could. It could. It could it be. Yeah. Could I mean, be. I want to keep my. Yeah. I want to keep my mind open to it. You know, I. I don't want to say it definitely is fake without concrete evidence mm. it just seems weird like how they see like obviously they could have been hallucinating and stuff but like the the red owl face and then the metallic tree dress mm. Mm. just yeah. mm. I mean I kind of feel like maybe they saw an owl in the tree and then you know when sometimes you like might wake up at night time and you think you you see somebody sat on your chair but it's just your jumper in a weird position yeah. or something like that i kind of feel mm. like maybe that's sort of what have happened to them like maybe somebody said look at those eyes and look there's a body there or something then <laughs> everybody started seeing that same image in their head yeah, yeah it could be it well there is such a thing as in there of like um like group hallucinations and stuff where it's sort of like your mentality and I, I don't know like maybe it's something to do with you could like you said it could be that someone said something mm. and then everyone saw that because yeah. that that image was in their mind but 
I don't know. I mean, if it was a hoax, obviously, you'd have to put a lot of work into that. <laughs> and also, like, there's, like, a lot of kids there. And, like, kids are, you know, surely you, they're not the ones who want to get involved in a hoax. Because, <laughs> like, like, if the newspapers came around and went asking the kids, the kids would be like, oh, yeah, I want to be in the paper. And then they're just, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. they could potentially just completely ruin your plan. Uh, I don't know. It's an interesting one, for sure. It's different. I've never heard it before. Hmm. Mm. I've heard of it, but I've never actually looked into it. So it's definitely one of the one of those stories that's just not told as much, is it? When you compare it yeah. to like UFO crashes, like uh, the Roswell UFO and stuff like that. All right, so shall we talk about different like hot spots, like where the pl the places where alien activity has been throughout the like years and years? Yeah, sounds yeah, good. Sure. So like, obviously, there's Area Fifty One, Nevada. Yeah. Which is like, obviously, the the Air Force Base, where all the all the spaceships that have crashed over the years have like gone, and how like. Some people think they're making like viruses or what not. So, what do you guys want to? What do you guys think about of Area Fifty One? What do you reckon's happening there? Um, I, I don't know. Do you want to go first, Chris? Yeah, sure. Um, I really do think it's literally just a base where, obviously, everything's shrouded in secrecy, but everybody there is just basically researching spy technology training pilots for espionage activities I really do think it's just a top secret airbase um, I've heard stories of how it's got a massive underground part to it um, which wouldn't really surprise me because you do hear stories about large underground bunkers underneath bases etc um, I don't think they're harboring little green men. Um, I don't think they've opened anybody up there. Well, they might have opened people up, who knows, but I don't think they've opened up any little extraterrestrial visitors. Um, I do remember reading a story about the US Air Force trying an experimental sort of aircraft that was in the shape of like a saucer. Um, yeah, I do remember reading or well, hearing of that. I I remember that as well because I think they were testing um, long range, like basically a form of um, early warning measure for missiles, mm. and it was basically like an air balloon. And the this, this scientists had this theory where like if you put an air balloon with like this device on it into a certain like altitude, it would be able to detect missiles because it could hear them and like nothing else so it could tell if there was going to be a missile coming hmm. uh, but the policy with them is like they can't reveal any of that stuff to the public yeah so they have to deny anything relating to anything so it can like make them look suspicious because you can be like oh we saw this floating object and they'd be like oh no we don't know anything about that even though they do but they have to keep it confidential i mean i don't want to get too political or anything like that I want to stay away from that but being like probably one of the world's main superpowers obviously if they're developing anything top secret they want to keep it top secret they don't want any other countries hearing about it etc um so yeah basically my whole point is i think area 51 is literally just an area where they just do experimental planes and aircraft etc and just do research on weaponry and I think that's just what it is I don't think there's any people there I don't think there's anything extraterrestrial there although I really wish <laughs> I really hope there is but until well, that you said, day you said, you said there's no people there like I know for a fact that they have buses routined in and out I mean like no extraterrestrial people there <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, they've, they've definitely got people that work there, yeah. yeah. I mean, you get the plain uh, jetliners that take people in, don't you? Just like plain yeah. white uh, jet aircraft that take people in, or buses, like you said. No, the buses are apparently like really aggressive on the road and stuff, mm. if you're like in front of them. <laughs> yeah. 
like Jeepers Creepers style, like the like, yeah, I was about to say <laughs> yeah, that, like Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> what about you, Reese? What do you think about Area Fifty One? I think it's more of like a smoke and mirror sort of thing. Like it's more of a distraction to sink else. Like, like there can't be just one place. Well, I won't say they've got that. They've got more than one place. I'm just saying that Area Fifty One is like more like like it's too well known to actually mm. have anything alien related hidden there. It makes more sense to have like that as like a front, like you know, people know about it. Let's just keep making things as if it's as if we do have things here, yeah, while then hiding it sense. away in more of a hidden location. And yeah, but like yeah. it's like the meme with the that's rush area fifty one kind of thing. <laughs> the Naruto <laughs> like, run. <laughs> yeah. pe people were wondering like how if if the military whoever they are was so worried about it surely like if there was something there they would have tried to move it out so in case they did get through because how many was it like two million people signed the petition yeah but not that many people yeah only a few there, hundred yeah. people went i think yeah <laughs> but the military was so worried they went to that guy's door and told him to delete the yeah, air they told him to delete the delete the Facebook thing. Yeah, I remember reading but, about that. Like, if they had anything in there, and they were so worried because they they put up a statement saying they will use force if they have to, if people do enter, but if they did, if they had something, they'd either have to move it underground somewhere, unless it's connected to somewhere else underground, or they would have had to have loads of vans take everything away. Not necessarily, because they even if people did get in like onto the ground space itself, like how are they going to get into any of these like special locked off areas where true. anything could be? Like they'd need like yeah, that's true. I'd guess like passwords and key cards and like I don't know the eye identification thing or fingerprint as well. Like, they're not going to have that, so they wouldn't be worried too much about that. Yeah, like with them like asking a person to shut it down it's just more of like them probably not wanting to have to shoot people yeah. well yeah it's more of a public safety thing than anything isn't it yeah yeah that's it's just the way i see that it's just as i say i think it's just a silly idea to begin with and, <laughs> and the next thing i was going to talk about is like uh the roswell crash the alleged alien spaceship crashed in july 1947 and like it was like covered up and stuff and it got it apparently got taken to area 51 but the roswell if i remember correctly it was like someone thought it was a weather balloon yeah uh, that's what i was saying about earlier yeah with um the it's hearing it's the like, missiles yeah because at the time it was a lot of you know the i think the biggest worry in everyone's head was the power of the atomic bomb and the fact that you can just wipe out a city and you don't even need to go anywhere near the country you know you can just shoot it from the sea or whatever or you know but i think everyone was like oh we need to come up with a way to be able to detect these to be able to stop them um and i think that that's why there was so much secrecy around it it's because if the research got out there if other people, if other countries knew that America were trying to make this technology, then they could have like accounted for it and made a, you know, a counter to their counter. Uh, <laughs> so I think that's what a lot of Area Fifty One is. I think it, it, it they're very secretive because I think a lot of it's probably military research and technology, like Chris was saying. And if that information got out, they're basically putting money into research for no reason because everyone else will know what they're doing and how to stop it. You know, it's, it's, it is like a card game. It's like trying to surprise each other, keeping your hand secret so, you, you know, they don't know what's coming. <laughs> but apparently, like, the stuff with those original incidents, I think they happened so long ago now that there have actually been official documentations, like, released of the different incidents from the military and the information around them. I think you can actually find them now because there's, like, a limit. I think it's, like... I want to say it's like 50 years or something, but I think it's like after that amount of time, this information becomes public, 
so you can actually like look into um, the government's explanations for these different events which I think like you said with the weather balloon I think that is one of the ones that, that that's like the government's official story at the time they said oh it's a weather balloon but actually it was this balloon that they were like inventing and testing uh, to detect missiles yeah but yes it's definitely like I can understand why there's so much suspicion around it because like, as far as like countries go I think America is it's such a huge country you know <laughs> you, like when you think about um, the UK like co compared to America like we aren't like there's loads of states in America that are like you know like 10 times the size of the UK and stuff like that you know it's, it's a huge place so there's a lot of stuff going on over there and the military could like very easily hide a lot of things in a lot of places so like Reese was saying it makes sense that they had this one obvious one to draw people's attention to hide the fact that oh underneath New York there's like a big research facility or something you, you wouldn't yeah. know <laughs> but there's been there's been sightings in England and stuff yeah like yeah. in the 60s um, people said they were they heard in Warminster is it Warminster Warminster yeah whatever that guess place so. is um <laughs> If they said about like hearing aliens and crop circles and stuff it's like close to Stonehenge mm, like in that area yeah. well, it's like the crop yeah. circles in the 60s that was Stonehenge has always been associated with yeah it's a, aliens, it's a cult it? as well isn't it I know I know witchcraft and stuff go up there yeah well a lot of people used to make the argument that oh how were these rocks stacked this way yeah um like it's impossible for primitive you know primitive technologies to have achieved this you know there wasn't like cranes or anything to lift the rocks up wasn't um, um like the folklore stuff about it like being like giants or something bringing them yeah over? i think it was mm. yeah but i think like since then people have like actually managed to create methods of doing it i think there was a guy that made a stone head in his backyard or something and he did it using basic level technology like he was like oh i literally only did this with like bits of wood and like creating like levers and stuff and like balancing the different weights it's kind of similar with like egypt and like how people say that oh how did they build the pyramids uh, in the way that they built them like it's impossible to do that with the technology at the time it's always the arguments that are made that bring out like oh how could they have done this it must have been aliens because that's the only explanation <laughs> but I don't know it's interesting whole, I'm not saying it's aliens but <laughs> aliens <laughs> yeah exactly that guy <laughs> there's also um, in Wales in Broadhaven it's also referred to as the Broadhaven Triangle in the 70s 14 primary school children saw a UFO seven foot tall silver in the field next to their school just how it's like grey they're meant to be like grey and green aren't they these aliens like what what gave people if if it's all made up and people haven't seen aliens what gave them the thought they're grey and green uh, I'd say it's probably just like differentiate them from us like as humans so as humans we've got like what white black brown all that sort of stuff but to make them seem more alien and a bit more frightening you just like change the color to like i don't know a bright green or gray or being, whatever just being slim them, with a massive head yeah just to make them stand out more like because i think i can't remember what it's cool but let's think what like if there's things what look humanoid to us but not quite human it naturally creeps us out oh and cali valley yeah because they're not like full-on looking humanoid like humans but they've got the humanoid sort of aspect to them so they just it it's just thinking our brains what just freaks us out by looking at it it's like, yeah. yeah it's like a it's like people we uh, we have these built-in inst like instincts that tell us Oh, we should be afraid of this. 
um, and it could be like based on like sort of evolution and like oh we should avoid this because if we go near this we'll get ill and stuff like that like it's like a built-in evolutionary like instinct to dislike these things um, so you if you like you think of like oh having like a swollen head or something that could be like an illness so if you see that you're like oh I shouldn't go near that because they're ill or something like that I guess I guess that's the theory behind uncanny valley um, which you usually get with like seeing like a weird looking doll or something like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the, I do think like as I say it's mostly due to that like a lot of these sort of like potential alien sightings have that sort of like like we're like humanoid but not human enough to look like us they're more like let's say just to creep us out yeah and make us be like oh that that, that creeps us out M must be a bad bad thing it must be a bad sort of like alien yeah I think it's like almost uh, like um thing with just the human psyche that actually like the things we fear the most are other people so like something being similar to us scares us you know it's like on this planet we're the peak of evolution we're on top of the food chain so the idea of anything out there being better than us like just freaks us out and that's what a lot of these fears are built around i guess it's just the idea of uh yeah. Just some aliens just turn up and just take us all out, and we can't do anything about it. <laughs> well, if they've managed to get to us, uh, they must have decent technology. So uh, exactly. Seeing as as we're not anywhere near that sort of travel, being able to get to uh, other planets in a decent amount of time. Yeah. Well, it's no the the theory that if a aliens came to this planet, there's like one of two things they'd want one of them is resources um, and the other one is like basically exploration like interest of the universe so either they're tourists or they want to come and conquer us and take all our resources because like on a like otherwise why would you bother like traveling here <laughs> like, you're either coming here because you're like oh they've got something we want or, oh, they're interesting, let's look at them. Uh, yeah, it's like the same reason you go on holiday. <laughs> Maybe it's just aliens coming on holiday and having a look at the humans to see if they've come up with space travel yet. <laughs> yeah, I guess that makes a bit of sense, really, because they, if they've got that much technology and it's advanced that far, exploring your own planet isn't really as much fun, really, is yeah. it? So it's like, go out, explore others, and see what's going on there. Yeah, they're bored of their alien world. They're like, oh, I've seen all this. <laughs> yeah. Also, if their technology is really advanced, they might live for like ridiculous amounts of time. So they could just be like, I've literally seen everything on the planet. <laughs> I'm well, done. I, I need to get some else. Yeah, well, they say like, with Earth itself, we haven't like explored everything. Like, I know like a lot of the oceans have been like yeah. left unexplored and. Like, I'd say there's probably quite a decent amount of like the actual like land itself which hasn't been explored because we're still finding new species of animals and whatnot like, and mm. insects and stuff so it's like yeah. before really thinking of going to space we need to fully understand our own planet but mm. like, like how deep, so how deep the sea is like I can't remember how much percentage they've actually explored of the sea Mm. Yeah, I can't it's, remember it, the exact numbers either. Yeah, it's, it's not it's, very it's much. It's not much. Isn't it like a lower percentage? We know more about space than we yeah. do our yeah. ocean because we literally don't have the technology to do that. But we have the uh, we have the technology to look into space and see everything. But we don't have the technology to go to the bottom of the ocean, yeah. <laughs> like easily, because of uh, the pressure and stuff. Mm. Yeah, I think it's more of though like that space is more interesting than the bottom of an ocean. Yeah, like out in the ocean, like out in the ocean, there's like not much really there apart from probably like what more kinds of fish, more and weird stuff. fish. Yeah, like all this other <laughs> stuff we've seen on our planet before. 
they might yeah. look different to what we already know but mm. out in space we don't know what we will find mm. I think it's just that sense of like wanting to get out there's overtaken that and that's why we know more about space yeah maybe it's um a survival point of view as well because you know with all that's happened to this planet with global warming and stuff like that and the limited resources that we have i think a lot of people have just jumped to the conclusion that oh we need to go out there and colonize other planets like that's our priority above anything else like that's why people are so interested in mars and stuff because they think oh when this planet's fucked we just go to mars <laughs> you know it's well, like if you're looking at it like that mars itself is technically as you say a fucked planet because there's nothing really there. It's all like rock and They found water stuff. though. Yeah, but like the effort of making Earth a habitable planet without like having to have like be living in like buildings all the time. It's I don't think it's worth it. I think I'd rather than spend time effort. trying to fix Yeah, that's gonna be too much effort to, and I just like have it to fix the current planet. Just makes more sense know. to do that. Yeah, I, I don't know what people are thinking. I, I don't know if it's just the the greed of man, where we constantly want things we don't have. So we see a big empty planet, and you know the different countries are thinking, "Oh, how much of that can we get?" <laughs> you know. I think it comes to a mixture of greed, survival, but mainly I think it comes to a lot of it is exploration. I mean, throughout our history. Because they say humanity originated from Africa, like everybody originated from there, and then they explored out, they migrated. Um, you see it with the colonists going to the New World or Americas. The Americas, um, I'm sure they probably thought that there was nothing beyond the sea, but they explored. And I, th I think a lot of it does just come down to people and or humanity as a whole are explorers I like to think we have to explore things we have to light up I think we like to like to overcome challenges if anything um, I mean there's a bad point to us when we do find new things we tend to slaughter the natives um, <laughs> I think that's just in our DNA but I think that could be said about anything really any sort of civilization or race etc um regardless the solar system is one day doomed earth will die one day unfortunately whether that's through our own hands or the star exploding regardless it's gonna go um so i think we just need to get off the rock basically that we're stuck on and expand outwards at least then if this rock goes at least we've got somebody else on another rock somewhere ready to, to it, take to on the mantle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, history likes to repeat itself. Yeah. Um, Did you but, guys know? Yeah. Carry on. No, that's, that's basically it, yeah. Did you guys know there's a alien grave site in Aurora in Texas? No, I did not know that. Apparently there's a cemetery that has a UFO burial site for a pilot that crashed in the 1800s. Hmm. Have they ever dug it up? Or... Yeah, you'd think people would be like, yeah, let's go find it! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, like, I'm looking at pictures now and it looks, it looks pretty, like, it looks pretty men maintained and stuff, like, I don't... What's it called? Um, it's called... I'll send you a link. It's called uh, Aurora Cemetery. There you go. See, thank you. Even if there was sunk in there before, there won't be any more. No. They looters, like grave robbers, they would have taken that stuff years ago, like years upon years ago. If not them, then the government would have at least taken it. Yeah, right. apparently the 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 pilot was petite and Martian. 
<laughs> from the body. He got. He was petite. He was petite. <laughs> but yeah, um, apparently he was killed on impact from the crash. Yeah. I don't know if the cemetery's been there since the 1800s, or if that's when the alien was buried there. Yeah, it doesn't really give you a oh, lot no, of information. 18, 1897, April. Apparently, uh, the Dallas Morning News found a mystery airship. Uh, smashed through a windmill. <laughs> <laughs> and crashed into the ground. And um, the the pilot died, apparently. And he was small. <laughs> Damn aliens. <laughs> smashing up my windmill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those pesky little guys oh, apparently there's a headstone with a crude etching of an alien spaceship on it hmm. there is no evidence that it's a hoax hoax? a hoax or anything like that hmm. but weird, hmm. weird. Yeah. Yeah, it says that the um, headstone has also been stolen oh has it yeah harsh you think people would go like, yeah, let's go, let's go dig it up. Mm. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's just greed in there. It's like, oh, you see so like that. You're like, oh yeah, I want that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like all the abandoned places. People are like, let's smash it up because it's it's ruined. Let's not uh, keep yeah. it pristine. Yeah. Mm. Like I've been to so many that's just been destroyed just for fun. Yeah. No it's like that when you're a kid. You just want to break stuff. For yeah, no I don't get that. I'm <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, my granddad had installed like these new lights on this trailer. Yeah. And I saw them and I was like, oh, I've never seen those before. <laughs> so I took a hammer and smashed them all. <laughs> my granddad cried, he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> what? And I was like, oh, I didn't realise these were, I didn't realise these were new. I thought they were just, just junk. <laughs> uh, oh, I do remember when we went camping when we were younger and mm. in the middle of the forest middle of nowhere and we we were just like pissing around just messing around and um i can't remember if it was you or johnny one of us looked up and we saw a bright light in the sky and when we looked at it it shot down into the forest like it was it was really far away but like it could have been like a comet or something but it's the fact that we saw it and then we saw it go straight down. Yeah, so, like, if... I, mm, carry on. Sorry. I remember uh, one of those stories. I think maybe you're getting, like, an incident with our other friend Johnny and me, com like, combined into one. Because I remember we were walking back through the woods, like, on the road. And as we, like, got back to my house, me and you, we saw this light in the sky... Like you said, it sort of was there, and then it like dipped away. Yeah, that was probably it then. But I, I think when we did go camping in the woods that time, I think you and Johnny also said something about seeing something, something similar to that, um, when you were up there. Because it was, it, it was always so starry there. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you're there and there's no clouds, you can't just literally yeah. see all the stars. No, I um, just found it weird that like. If it was, like, a shooting star or what, whatever, like, you don't really see them go down. Mm. And you don't really see them as you look at them. Yeah. Like, you see them at the corner of your eye just going. You don't, you don't pinpoint where it is and then just watch it go down. Yeah, I remember being really creeped out when we saw that, actually. Yeah. I've seen one shooting star in my life. Um, just happened to happen as I looked up actually and I do remember clearly seeing it go across the sky but in like an ar arch rather than just going straight down and mm. it was incredibly fast as well um, but yeah that's like the only experience I've ever had and I've not actually had any encounter as much as I wish I could my god, I, w I really wish I could, but yeah, no, nothing exciting like that for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> I would, like, love to do, like, a, a tourist, like, yeah. road trip of, like, all these sort of sites. 
Especially, like, I mean, even in the UK, we've got a lot of stuff yeah. that we could like go around and see. Like last time we talked about the A six six six, we could go there and stuff mm. like that. But I'd love to go to like Flatwoods in America and like they've got like a gift shop there, like slash museum that has all the Flatwoods monster <laughs> stuff in there. I'd love to go and uh, do all that sort of stuff. Well, we could always take a trip up to Stonehenge and like camp out there if you can. Um, that would be I, quite cool. I, don't know if, don't know if you're I, allowed to, I went yeah. there once during the day because. It cost me about sixty pound for a ticket for each person. What to get there? Uh, to like go up to it, sixty oh, pounds if, for it. each person. Nah. So me and my wife, yeah, hundred and twenty pounds just to go up to it. I feel like it's just a walkway. No, no, it's really touristy now. Basically, oh, you got to pay it, yeah. and it's owned by the National Trust, I believe. So mm. all the money that they get is used to maintaining it, but. Do they have like security and stuff? Uh, they've got it's all fenced off now. You're not allowed up to it anymore because uh, of people graffitiing and. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was like, people must just go out there and graffiti. Yeah, What's people the carving point? the names on there and <laughs> silly things <laughs> like that. But they do sometimes hold events yeah. for like stargazing where you can actually go up to them. But I think they're you've got to like book a ticket or something like that Expensive, in advance yeah. and I do think they go quite quickly but I mean you can see one of the air roads I, I don't think it's the air 30 <laughs> near me but uh, one of the air roads goes right past it and you can yeah. actually camp along that well I've seen motorhomes camped along those roads yeah I have as well yeah I, I remember when I was younger going on that road and it, like you said there was like a bunch of motorhomes like parked on like the the fields opposite i don't know if like the farmers who owns the own the fields like on the other side of the road like rent it out maybe yeah possibly yeah hmm. they could probably make pretty good money doing that they're like oh why are we keeping cows in there we'll just let people come and camp <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful place yeah. so i highly recommend going there i really do Mm. Uh, not for the amount it costs nowadays. But yeah, that's the only downside. 60 back. quid is a lot to just go look at a rock. <laughs> yeah, I remember going back when I was a kid for family. And... Uh, but the worst part, you just can't go up to him anymore because of what people have mm. done. So. Yeah, see, that's something I remember being able to do, getting a bit closer to him than what you can now. Yeah. yeah. I've seen yeah. it, but I've never been up there. Mm. Yeah, I've seen it from the road, yeah. like Chris was saying, on that same road. Yeah, never, see, like, I don't think it's anything special really I think it's just a bunch of rocks in the middle of a field to be honest hmm. I'd be interested to get I don't know what like the nearest town is and if they've got like Merch. museums and stuff <laughs> yeah. like related to it I'd be interested to go there because it's one of those I think like the, it's kind of cool like researching this stuff but when you go online like a lot of the stuff you find is like the more like well-known stuff i'd be quite interested to just go and like ask locals about it and things because yeah. there might just be like a crazy guy who's like oh yeah i see aliens there like every night mate <laughs> 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 stuff like that you know it's be quite interested to hear some of these stories even if they are just ridiculous and over the top <laughs> i just would like to hear a lot of them <laughs> i know it's a bit off topic but when you are stood there if you look around you you can see all the burial mounds there's there's loads of burial mounds in all the surrounding fields almost encircling it and just recently they found another stone circle nearby it um oh. like in the last few days i think uh, I, I remember just coming across it on the internet um and yeah i'm pretty sure they found another stone circle not too far from it in the general vicinity so they're always finding new things still about it Going back to uh, sorry, just had a thought when I was saying about like the like local story stuff. I'd be really interested to hear from people that are listening to this podcast mm. about their stories. Um, so maybe we should like have our email in the description. And well, just if you want to email us, or just yeah, write in the comments, um, just about your experiences because I'd love to hear about different personal experiences. I think they're like really interesting. Um, just hearing like, a personal point of view on something like that. You know, something that's not like overly 
covered by the media and like twisted every which way because the thing is as soon as like the media get involved people get on it and try and bring their own points of view on it and they make up stuff yeah so it's much more interesting when you hear like a story from a friend about how they saw a ghost when they were a kid like last time when we were talking about that sort of stuff I found that really interesting because it's just like a lot different <laughs> yeah so please leave some comments in below Yes, write all your spooky comments. <laughs> <laughs> Just a uh, quick question for you guys. Do you guys honestly believe we've been visited? I reckon we have to some degree. Mm. Like, yeah. I think a lot of it is just... Either like... Chinese whispers or something like that. The Chinese are involved, they're whispering. <laughs> <laughs> like they've just I don't know they've they've heard something or they've seen something like the owl kind of thing yeah they saw an owl yeah all of them are just owls it's just it was, owls it was, it was <laughs> ten foot high owls. <laughs> ten foot tall owl yeah silver owl ten foot tall owl red face. Yeah. the flatwoods owl <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't personally think we've been visited no um, no I really don't think we have um, not even throughout history itself like no I I really don't history. think we have um, as much as I really want it to be but there's no concrete evidence as far as I'm aware of if somebody knows of anything leave a comment and let me know but uh, f from what I've researched I've found no concrete evidence to say that we've been visited um I mean, there's been sightings, don't get me wrong, throughout history. I mean, there's even some engravings in Egypt, I think, about flying things in the sky, <laughs> um, which I might have seen, but no, nah, I don't. I think there's always an explanation for it, like a co comet, an asteroid, anything like that, really. But well, have you heard the theory that a lot of like the old ancient gods like the ancient in Egypt gods yeah, gods and the ancient like Greek gods and all that they were just aliens Have you heard that sort yeah of thing? I've, I've heard that sort of thing um, yeah I have heard about those theories and that because I think it makes a little bit of sense like like say we went back in time or go back in time and we took like mobile devices or like a flashlight or sink to like I don't know a thousand odd years ago to them it would seem like magical powers like witchcraft or like godly sort of powers so saying that like that makes a bit of sense to me but at the same time it just seems to be like a the, the way I look at it if I was to see these people I think I would just see people that are afraid they want to believe in something they don't want to believe that we're just on our own and the speck of dust floating in the cosmos they want to believe that there's something for us after um, that's what I think all the gods relate to basically I mean um, like when the Spaniards first took weapons and stuff to the Americas I don't think they probably looked at those guns as gods when they were shooting them down um, I don't. I don't think they started worshiping guns. At least <laughs> they might have tried to get them, maybe. But some yeah, of, some of them might. Have. <laughs> the, the crazy yeah. ones, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you never know with like some of the um, like the rural villagers. They might have like not worshipped them as gods, but feared them as like a god, or as they would a god. Yeah, I mean, uh, they definitely feared them. Yeah, I mean, I know for a fact they fear of the diseases that all the uh, Europeans brought, like smallpox and that. Mm. They they uh, counted those as like um, plagues from the gods and whatnot. So, but the smallpox blankets. <laughs> so it does make a bit of sense that all these things, what say we couldn't understand, would be seen as being like a god, especially back then when a lot of you know, like God talk was around, and that's what their main focus was. Gods. That was the only explanation they had, because yeah. science didn't have the advancements it has today. Yeah. So to like, explain things. Yeah. So it's just like 
can't explain it at the time. Gods. Mm. As yeah. simple as it was back then, so. That does make sense. I do think it's interesting, the Egyptian gods in particular, because they're so varied and, you know, like they have all these interesting depictions, you know, like with the different heads of the different animals and all these sort of things. I think there is a lot of like. It's very, like, if it is just all made up, it's very creative. But yeah. like you said, there could be another explanation. It could be that literally they had interactions with these strange beings and they interpreted them in their own way. And that's what these images are. They're the ancient Egyptians' interpretation of an alien. Yeah. Uh, could be, you know, it's... There's, there's no way of knowing because we can't go back in time and ask them. So. <laughs> if not yet, we can't. <laughs> but um, have you? I know it's probably off topic, but have you seen the um, TV show The Orville? I haven't. It's made by the same guy as a uh, Family Guy. Oh right, <laughs> Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> yeah, but pretty much in one episode. Um, they land on a planet and they're, they're not supposed to interact with any of the, the um, people. Yeah. But as one of the people from the, sh the Orville ship is like just looking around, they like startle some girl. The girl falls over and hurts her head and it's bleeding really badly. Mm. And she uses a device to heal the wound. And then they come off the planet and the planet disappears because it's like out of like a different, like, I don't know, it's weird how the planet works. It like disappears and reappears in its own universe and comes back to ours and that time flows differently. Right. But pretty much it allows them to see what the Orville crew members' actions influenced yeah. that civilization. And yeah. pretty much she ended up getting worshipped as a god and then feared yeah. as well. So, yeah. you know, pretty much they were technically aliens going to that planet. So that's why I was sort of bringing that up because it, it sort of makes yeah. sense like that to me. Yeah, I think it's a concept that like a lot of uh, media does sort of play around with. Like, I think uh, Rick and Morty had the thing where they encountered this planet, which was basically our own, but everything was snakes. And they accidentally killed a snake astronaut. And Morty's like, oh, I'm going to fix this. So he gets a snake from our planet and replaces it. But then when the snake goes there, they're like, they figure out how to communicate with the snake and they learn about this other planet through it. So it's like their influence and their technology is just that affects the whole thing. It's like, it, it could, from our point of view, like if some being came down, did a thing, we'd be like, well, how do they do that? <laughs> and like you say, it's like we would worship them as a god. Going back to like the ancient Egypt and that, like with the pyramids, it's like I just find it like strange how like as humans we have this fascination with pyramids in general, like because they're not just like in Egypt, they're in like like the Aztec pyramids, and then I think yeah, there's like theories of like people seeing them in like um, I think it's either Canada or like the Antarctic or something like triangular shapes what they can see under like ice and whatnot it's just mm. it is an interesting correlation that like those two places like with as I said with the Aztecs and the Egyptians they're so far apart but they both have a lot of similarities in these designs and it seems very unlikely that they just come up with it on their own and get to such a similar result um so yeah, it does feel like there was some sort of outside force having an influence there. But, but yeah, I, I can't remember whether it's of like pyramids as well, but I think they are pretty much like quite literally. I wouldn't say in every country, but quite a lot of countries have them. Yeah. I think yeah, I there think was some in uh, China. Yeah. But they, the the ones in China, they China tries to say that they don't exist. Hmm. But, yeah. Getting conspiracy theory <laughs> territory. We should just do an episode about <laughs> conspiracy theories. 
Uh, we could do a lot of episodes about that. <laughs> yeah. So many. <laughs> All right then. Should we should we call it here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's been good. We've covered uh, a lot of stuff. I think we've all agreed that we'll do like a Sasquatch episode next time. Yeah, yeah that'll be entertaining. The old sand squanch. Big yeah. big hand. Big big, big hand. Big, Large big, hand. Big, big foot's cousin. <laughs> I was in the woods and a man came out with a large hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll call it here. Uh, thank you for joining the podcast, guys. Yeah, yeah and it's been thanks for listening. Anyone want to say anything? Any last words? Uh, just what we mentioned earlier. Like, if you've got your own stories, please let us know. Yeah. We'd love to talk about them in the podcast. And we'd shout you out and everything, obviously. But yeah, I think it would be really cool to hear about these personal stories. Yeah, definitely. I'd be up for that. Yeah, I look forward to seeing some. Yeah. All right, thank you for tuning in, guys. And we'll see you next time. On the weird shack. See you next time, guys. Bye. Bye. See you, Bye. See, see you in our weird shack. Ooh.